This is a Dr. Blogstein exclusive. The reason we're talking to yeah. you is because you are quarantined in the hospital there because you came, you came down to, with tuberculosis. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but uh, instead of wallowing in self-pity and boredom, you decided to uh, take the time that you have being by yourself with no human contact to create a little rap persona for yourself. And you made these videos on YouTube, and they're catching fire. In, in, in some weird way, this infection turned into a virus because now you're viral. <laughs> I, apparently so. Um, it's all happened pretty quickly, but I'm just sort of sitting here in my little quarantine room trying to keep myself busy and knocking out videos to entertain myself, and it appears that they're making their way around the world, which has been pretty awesome. It's been cool. So how, how did it happen? So before we talk about how you got uh, tuberculosis, you're, you're stuck there in quarantine. When did it get to yep. the point where you were so bored that you decided to play around with the camera and the computer and the, making the music? It had been about two weeks um, and it had been a couple of weeks that I'd sort of sat there watching DVDs and lying on my bed and I'd sort of elevated it and de-elevated it and lifted it and dropped it as many times as I could in as many different positions as I could stay comfortable and I'd watched as much daytime television as I could handle and read as many books as I could pay attention to because I started to get the attention span of a goldfish. Um, and so, yeah, after a couple of weeks, I started mucking around with my... Um, MacBook and then found that it had a couple of programs, one that allowed you to be able to record music called GarageBand and another one that was like iMovie and it had a built-in camera. So I just like literally knocked up a tune in the space of an hour or two and um, le whilst learning how to use the software and then sent emailed it around to some mates and they had a bit of a laugh and they're like, bloody sick rapper, that's heaps funny, you got to make a film clip to that. So I made a little film clip on the built-in um, camera within the laptop and then I emailed it to them on YouTube because I couldn't actually email the video file size, it was too large. And then before I knew it, it was like it had done a thousand hits in Australia and I was like, a thousand hits, that's crazy. <laughs> I can't believe a thousand people have watched me carrying on like an idiot and dancing in the shower. And um, Yeah, then I don't know, from there I just sort of started dropping another couple of videos and I got a, an, an interview on a Sunday morning television program over here from quarantine and it's just sort of from there slowly wow. progressed. It is so amazing how that kind of stuff snowballs. From one email, forward it around and now you're, and now you're uh, uh, big time all across the world. You're, I mean, you're the biggest uh, Australian import since I think Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> it's insane. Eh? It's insane when you say it like that. What um, what Oregon's really interesting about it too is like it's really taught me a quick. It's almost been like a quick fire lesson in social media and what social media has the ability to do. Because like sure. I, when I came in here, I didn't even have a Facebook account. I sort of I, I all I used the internet for was email and you know things like where it is to work out where I've got to go for meetings and just basic sort of log on log off check the news kind of things and. Now that, I've, now that all this has happened, I've got a real Facebook, uh, another Facebook that I've added fans on. I've got a Facebook fan page. I've got a Twitter account. I've got a YouTube account. I've got a MySpace. Like, it's out of control. It's unbelievable. And it's only because I've got the time because I'm sitting in here in a quarantine room. Like, I am going to uh... – what, what does the staff think about all of this at your hospital? How, at have first they, have they... – yeah, I, this, at first it was like there was a couple of awkward moments where the um, <laughs> the staff would walk in and I'd like have one foot up on a couch and my undies on my head or like, <laughs> or dancing around in my with my gown made as a as a superhero cape or something and um and then after a couple of times that happened they just worked out that when I've got the little latch on my door shut it's best not to go in there. <laughs> <laughs> Did they know you were filming a video? I mean, did they know that you were actually doing something productive with the underwear on your head, or did they think you had I underwear sort of kept, on your head? Well, they'd walk in, and I'd be since I have to film all this off my actual laptop. They'd walk in, and I'd have my laptop set up on one of those little hospital tables, and I'd be like doing gangster signs with my hands <laughs> facing the laptop with the undies on my head, and they'd kind of walk in. I'd be like, "Oh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just taking a photo. I'm talking to some friends in." Uh, I like just try and make something up, but then one of them, like one of the nurses, saw one of the videos, and that got passed around to a couple of other nurses, and then they all started having a bit of a laugh about it. So I think it's fair; they're the same as anyone else in the sense that it's probably 
as much as it looks insane, it's something that's kind of keeping me a bit sane in here. Yeah, of course. In the in one of them, the the cribs. Uh, who who's filming? Because it's yeah, obviously someone. Oh, okay. My brother came in to help out with that. My brother is like, funnily enough, it's this. It's we've had this funny thing because my little brother has studied film and he's been doing sort of film and um, creating his own little short films and stuff for like years and years and years. And he, it's something he really enjoys doing. And then, and then I came into hospital and I've like knocked up a couple without any previous experience um, <laughs> in the space of a couple of weeks and they've gone around the world and he's kind of like, hold on here. So this is what I do. What are you doing here? So he's come, I asked if he'd come and help me out with the cribs thing because I get family and friends are allowed to come and visit and stuff. They've got to spend short amounts of time in here and they do have to wear masks and all that stuff. But why? in that short amount of time, he's helped why, why don't you just wear a mask so they don't have to? Why do they have to wear the mask? Well, the whole room's like a, a negative pressure yeah. room so yeah. that the bugs, bugs can't actually get out of here. So, I mean, like if I'm to sort of wear a mask for the rest of the time I'm here, I'm, I'm sort of coughing all over the place or I'm running around and – there's still the potential that they might, you know, breathe in some of my bugs. Right. It's just safer for them if they come in wearing a mask. Right. I'm going to play it's easier <laughs> for me. Right. I'm going to play. Uh, a it's hard to rap with a mask on. That's dude. a good point. That's a very good point, Vinny. How uh, how did you get tuberculosis, or as I like to call it, the Burke? How did you how did you come down with that? <laughs> the Burke. As I like to call it, T to the B. Um, <laughs> I am. Um, Look, it's it's one of those things that when you're actually when you've contracted it and you've actually got the full blown active TB, it's really hard to pinpoint exactly when or where you might have contracted that. Um, all they can do is look at, I suppose, the traits of the strain and um, what it's sort of what's involved in your particular case. But look, at first we thought that I'd picked it up in South America um, it, on a journey that I had over there last year, just sort of travelling around. I went to Argentina and Brazil and sort of cruised around there for a while. But in, in sort of in further developments with the way that my health's been affected um, and with regards to it being a multi-drug resistant strain of tuberculosis, as we found out when I came back to hospital again, um, we're thinking it's probably more likely that I may have contracted this when I was living in South Africa about four years ago or so. Really? So TB does have, yeah, it's got the ability to lay dormant for quite a long period of time, particularly if you've got a healthy immune system and if everything's sort of working right and you're having all your three square meals a day. Um, I think, look, it's, it's, it's still a possibility that I may have picked it up in South America or in South Africa, but sort of the way it sort of makes sense, since I started showing visible signs of sickness when I was in South America itself, um, like I started coughing and getting night sweats and losing a bit of weight, is probably more likely that I just got a local chest infection of some kind over there or a local um, lung infection that sort of created a, an abscess of some kind and then the TB kicked in from there. How long now have you been in quarantine? All up, I've been over 80 days. It's been something like 82 days, I think, I've spent in here. I Basically, I was in here, I came in on the 9th of December, spent three and a half weeks in here, then got let out just after New Year's, and then they called me back in again um, on the 18th of January, and I've been here since then. And how much longer? Or do you think that they're keeping you there because you're giving good publicity to this hospital? <laughs> <laughs> So some of the um, some of the drugs cause paranoia, so I've had many nights lying up awake late at night thinking about that. <laughs> um, but no, nah, it's basically what where it's at at the moment is that um, the strain of multi drug resistant tuberculosis can be really hard to kill and it can be really really resilient um, because basically once those first major treatments don't work, the other existing antibiotics that they have out there aren't quite as strong for killing TB. They weren't, you know, it's not, they're not as effective as the main treatments, so they take a, quite a lot longer to kill it out of you. And um, what you sort of have to be careful of is, yep, they have to be really careful of letting me back out again because if they haven't killed this thing off properly, um, then there's the risk that it you know, more bugs could come out of dormancy and then when I'm out, the actual infection could return and then it would be immune to the second line of treatments, which oh, would boy. make it like a super, super bug. Oh, my God. Yeah, and what's, the yeah. first thing you, what's the first thing you want to do once you finally, you know, all the tests come back clean and they wait the four weeks and make sure that you're totally – what's the first thing you want to do when you get the hell out of there? Massive barbecued steak. Like, I don't care if it's 9 a.m. or it's like <laughs> friggin' midnight or it's like – 9 p.m. I just want to get out of here, go straight to a big barbecue, whack on a nice big New York cut fillet and 
have a nice steak and sit around and breathe fresh air and then maybe go put my body in the ocean or something. It's like, yeah. And look at some real girls that are like actually alive. <laughs> it's a